look for us, is there? Gerald! Goodness sake. What? I'm just asking, does he like horses? <laughs> oh, I can't believe you're behaving like this. Where have you been all day? We're on the holiday. Where have you been all day? It's all right. Oh. You've been with him, haven't you? Oh, how many more times there is you no You know you've been with him. Stop lying to me. Lying. Yes, you are. You're always lying to me about him. Lying. Yes, you are. Stop lying to me, you lying bitch! Disaster. I well, hope you're not pointing the finger at me. I told both you and the Crown Prosecution Service that there was not enough concrete evidence for a conviction. But there you are, you see, targets again. Unlucky, Mr. Frost. Hmm? With a brilliant waste of taxpayers' money. No hard feelings, eh? Don't push your luck, Flanagan. Here we go. Thanks. Everything all right? How much notice were you planning on giving me? What? The newspaper. So good hiding it, I saw it. Oh, that. Well, I, I haven't definitely decided to move yet, sir. What's the matter? Don't you like my cooking? You only use the microwave. We get on, don't we? We do, yeah. But I'd like to, um, to get on with someone else. Meaning? Well, you're no women in the house policy. There is no such policy. Well, there is for me. Anyway, you're on nights, aren't you? No, sir. It's been changed. Oh, well, we can change that again. So you won't have time to bring anyone back, will you? Don't you? Yeah, but if we get chores, they won't notice. Hurry up! Hurry up! I can do, Jack. You're See worse at this than I am. Hello? Come on, Presley, get off that phone. I've got a report to write. Can you spell that? I hope that's not an estate agent you're on to. Is that two ends, Mr. Flanagan? Flanagan? Is that Flanagan? Is that who I think it is? Inspector Frost. No! 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 What do you want, Flanagan? Someone's going to kill me. Oh, do they need a hand? You lied about me in court. I'm sorry, it's nothing personal. Listen. I'm at the farm. If this is a wind-up... It's not. Mr. Frost, please. All right, I'm on my way. Times. You sure we don't need backup, sir? No, no. Our greatest weapon lies right here, one inch beneath my nose. Your moustache? 
Dodge cheeky sword. All right, Flanagan, come on. I hope you're not wasting my time. Hey, Flanagan, you're in there. Hmm. Shall I cover the back? What? Yeah, go on. He's not dangerous. Flanagan, now come on. Come on, Flanagan, where are you? Gov, do you want... Shh, 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 shh. Can you hear something? Sort of hissing sound. Exactly. I was only taking a bath, would you believe it? Oi, Flanagan, come on, come out of there. I'm arresting you for wasting police time. Come on, come out. You don't want me to come in there and get you, do you? All right, go in there and get him. What, me? Yeah. Well, you're the one that's been to boarding school. All right, never mind. Come on, we'll both do it. Go in and drag him out already after three. Three, two, one, go! Billy! Oh, George. George, get someone down here, will you, to Flanagan's farm. There's a crocodile on the loose. A crocodile, and I'm not joking. Uh, make it quick, will you? Why doesn't he have a Doberman like every other villain? Good Lord. Oh, Good Lord. Lord. Get out of it. and look for that tow rag, Flanagan. Huh. You know what? I think we're too late. Well, we'd better get the paper suits down here anyway. Must be a stockroom. Yeah, well, either that or it's the Crocodile's Cafe. <laughs> Wait, Elvis. Here. There's a broom there. Sweep this off, will you? Let's find out what's underneath. Yeah. There is it. Anyway, hang on. The carpet python. Californian king snake. Oof. Monocle cobra. Oof. Oh, do you know what this is? Look, I didn't do biology, and whatever it is, I don't like it. It's a black mamba. Oh, they come in other colours, then, do they? What I don't understand is, what sort of bloke is it that wants to keep some of the most lethal snakes in the world as pets? The same sort of bloke who keeps pit bulls and rottweilers. Hmm. It's a macho thing. I oh, know, but you can't take a snake for a walk, can you? You wouldn't want to break into someone's house where they're kept, either. Hmm, that's true. Well, what's going on here, then? 
They'll be for an unlicensed for the section lab. Or a private collector. I'm surprised they haven't moved these out straight away. They're not going to survive in here for long. What about this? Where's its mum, do you think? Probably shot to get to the babies. Or drugged and sold for meat. These smugglers don't care. I mean, these cost nothing. And as long as a few survive, it doesn't matter. But for every three that do get through, at least 30 will have died on route. Carl, I think I found Flanagan. Well, what have we got? Got a hand, a bit of a foot, leg. Not long been parted in the torso. I take a guess, the uh, rest in the pond. Part of the crocodile. Well, we better get the divers down here then, aren't we? You sure there's only one crocodile, Jack? Yeah, of course. Four hours ago, Flanagan was making us look shabby in court. And now he's dead? Well, serves him right. Should have seen the state of some of those animals. Let's not get this out of proportion, Jack. We're only talking about some monkeys and a few reptiles. I beg your pardon? Animal smuggling is not worth taking up my officer's time. It's not our job. Just concentrate on the body. No, 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 that's all right. No, I'm not going anywhere. Right. I'll see you when you get here. Yeah? OK. Bye. I told you to leave a light on. I did, in the bedroom. Oh, yeah? I'm sorry. Mole must have gone. starters, but uh, you know, help yourself to salad. That's perfect, Jack. Good. So, chicken with all the trimmings, as promised. So it's uh, 20 minutes a pound, and plus another 20. That means that your dinner is just about ready to be served, madam. Oh, uh, help yourself to a glass of wine. Frost. Oh, sorry, Gav, have I interrupted anything? Yes, you have. What do you want? Um, we've got an unidentified body. It's a bit complicated. Well, can't you and Toolan sort it out? Uh, no, sir. I think it really does need a senior officer. We're over at 12 Queensbury Drive. Oh, I don't mind my way. Julie, love. 
I'm terribly sorry. An emergency has cropped up. I've got to go and have a look at a dead body. Oh, each to his own. Can't someone else do it? No, they can't, unfortunately. I'm the senior officer. I'll tell you what, look, you help yourself to some salad and I'll bring us back a nice takeaway, all right? Well, what about the chicken? Uh, we can have that cold tomorrow. We, you can stay and watch the television, all right? I, I won't be long. Well, make sure you're not, Jack. I need an early night. So do I, Julie. So do I. <sighs> Up here, Gov. Mr. and Mrs. Harris and their son came home from holiday. Found him on their bed, sir. Who is he? Family claim I've never seen him before. You what? Huh. Any ID? Just the wristwatch he's wearing. There's no wallet, nothing. And no sign of a struggle either. And no sign of a break-in. Any thoughts? There's no bites on this one, Frost. Looks like a coronary. His nose is recently broken. Recent enough to suggest some sort of struggle? A possibility. He's your lover, isn't he? Gerald, you need help. Then how did he get in our bed? I didn't give him a key. Keep your voice down. You still haven't told me where you buggered off to from the campsite. OK, then. Well, I met my lover back here. And the afternoon at it like rabbits until he keeled over on me and then I just left him dead in our bed so you'd find him when we got home. Will that do? Yeah, that'll do for a start. Who are you? I'm Detective Inspector Frost. Sorry, Inspector, I was uh, being sarcastic. Nice black eye you got there. I walked into a door. Oh, really? On a camping holiday? Interesting sort of tent. We were in a caravan. Oh. Well, that would account for it then, wouldn't it? Now, there are one or two things that uh, you could help me with here. Uh, is your son about? Adam! What? Now, are you uh, all sure that you didn't give anyone a key? Positive. Yes, I'm sure. Yeah. Only you see, there is no sign of a breaking. Unless, of course, somebody left a window open. I, I checked, they were all locked. Right. Anybody lost any keys recently? No. How many sets of keys are there to the house? Uh, mine, Christine's, Adam's. Uh, there's a spare set at my office. Four. Oh. Well, maybe you can give us a call tomorrow to confirm that they're still there. How are forensics getting on then, George? No, they've hardly started. Uh, Mr. Harris, do you have any friends or family you could stay with tonight? Why? Well, the house is a crime scene. And you expect us to find somewhere else to stay at this time of night? I'm sorry, sir. It's always your caravan, isn't it? Way up, mate. Come on, then, George. Let's go. Oh, oh Julie. All right, love. No, sorry. Sorry I'm late, but he just went on longer than I thought. But I did manage... Good night, Jack. When you've got to go, you've got to go. P.S. I ate the Kit Kat in the fridge and put a blanket over the chicken. Oh, well, that's it then, eh? All right, all right. It's no need to creep. Sorry, Gov. Where's Julie, is she? No, she's not. She's gone. No point wasting this pizza, then, is there? May I?
Congratulations, Inspector. This is a first for me. Uh, the human remains are over there. And this is Dr. Goodwin, a senior vet from London Zoo. Vet? Not alive, is it? Of course. Well, he's not going to wake up, is it? Not after the whacking great dose of fencyclidine cocktail I've given him. Got a few minutes before he starts coming round. Then we'd better make it snappy. <laughs> Dr. Goodwin pumped out some body parts. Uh, we've got the x-rays. The rest is from the bottom of the pond. It's not your man Flanagan, unless, of course, he was Oriental. That's warn you, it's, uh, it's a bit gruesome. Oh. Oh. When I recovered what was left of the organs, I found this lodged in his heart. Well, there's nothing like being doubly sure, is there? I also found this. I think it's a notebook. I don't read Chinese. No, neither do I. Anyway, thanks, Doc. We'd better get a warrant out for Flanagan. What did you say? Just going to go. Why are you at work? Someone from work has seen the house wrapped in police ribbon and it's gone round the office. What am I supposed to tell them? Well, you tell them we got back from holiday and we found a stranger dead in our bed. Stranger? Right, I'm going out. Where? Well, not to meet my lover, obviously. He's dead, right? Don't know what to think. Well, try this. If you don't get help for this insane jealousy and if you ever lay a hand on me again, Adam and I will be gone for good. Get back here! Um, would it be all right if I brought a friend home tonight? I thought we'd discuss this. You discussed it, I didn't. Yeah, well, you know how I feel about it. Well, uh, in that case, I, I am going to have to give you my notice. Can't this wait? No, sir. How late is this date going to last? Oh, uh, I don't know, sir. Well, if you think that I'm walking the streets of Denton while you have your evil way with WPC Armstrong, you've got another thing coming. And that reminds me... I think that all of this is too close to home. Oh, with all due respect, sir, no, I, uh, I don't think that's any of your business. How long are you going to be? Well, I don't know, do I? Well, you don't know. No, 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 I'll, I'll tell you what. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll set up some sort of signal. You what? Well, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll put one of your LP covers in the window, and if it's still there when you come back, you'll know I'm busy. Yes, and? Would you, um... You honk the horn twice to let me know you're there, uh, and then you go around the block a couple of times. Then, when you come back, and it's not in the window, all clear, you can come in. I'm not a bloody student. Well, I'll do the same for you and Julie Brown. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> 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 oh, all right, OK. Thank you very much. Very, very funny. <laughs> Now then, listen. Sadly, the body that was found inside the crocodile was not that of Flanagan, but was that of a Chinaman. Also amongst the remains was this, written in Chinese. It is, in fact, a notebook and not a menu. Actually, Gov, we think he might be Vietnamese. Translation's on its way. Ah, oh, right, thank you. So that means that Flanagan is not only our chief witness, but he's our prime suspect. Yeah, but there's no trace of him yet. There must be something. What about uh, prints down at the farm? Plenty, but no match. Well, there must be something. I mean, he was beaten, eaten and shot. Forensics are still on it, Gov. All right, OK. All right, what's next? The body in the bed, Jack. Yes. The post-mortem revealed that he'd been dead for about 24 hours. He died from a heart attack, possibly before, during or after sexual intercourse had taken place. So, in fact, he could be... Mrs. Harris. It's her bed. And Mr. Harris's. Forensics will confirm if the DNA in the bed was hers. <laughs> well, whoever it was, why didn't they call an ambulance? And the man had a broken nose. Mrs. Harris had a black eye. Well, she'd hardly leave a dead lover in her own bed. Oh, I don't know. Stranger things have happened. Forensics did find traces of what turns out to be modelling clay under his fingernails. So... Who is he? Anyone? A potter. Sculptor. Modelling clay comes mostly from Stoke. 
The main suppliers are faxing me through lists of everyone they sell to in the Denton area. Good. Well done, George. All right, come on, then. Let's get on the case. Chop, chop. Who else is there that buys clay? Anyone? Well, schools, art colleges, art shops. Right, OK. Tell you what. You get the troops to go out there with a photograph of the deceased, all right? Jack. Okay. Yes, something to see at the front desk. Who is it? Miss Brown. Right, I'm on my... All right, go on, you two. Ah, fancy a coffee? Yes, you do. Good. Thank you. Where's the fire? Hmm? No, it's not that. It's just that there's, well, too much of that in there. Anyway, I thought you'd blown me out. I was in the middle of an aerobics routine. Don't tell me my ladies embarrassed you. No, they... Oh, is that why you slunk away? I didn't slink. I looked for you. You slunk all night. Gone. Anything for me? No, nothing. Nice one, Jack. What? Pretty girl. What did you say her name was? I didn't. I'm sure I've seen her before. No, I don't think so. Not unless you're doing extramarital press-ups down at the local gym. Oh, I should be so lucky. Mm, it's true. Her name is Julie Brown, if you must know. Everyone else seems to. Let me in. Please, just want to let me in. You've got a bloody nerve, Flanagan. Just let me in. I want you to take me in for protection. I could do better than that. I'm thinking of arresting you for murder and attempted murder. Will that do? Well then, Kevin, why should I keep you in protective custody? If you don't, they'll kill me. Who's they? You see, we found pieces of your oriental friend at the farm. We also found some pieces of him inside one of your crocodiles. I thought he'd been shot. Oh, yes, he had. And you're my star witness. You see, we recorded your telephone conversation. So unless you tell me who shot him, I'm going to have to let you go. No, don't do that. All right. Start at the beginning. Why were those animals in your cellar? They were on locks. What lock? No, that was his name. He, oh. He's Vietnamese. All I did was rent in the space. So what was he doing with them? I don't know. He just paid me to feed them and keep them safe. All right. You switch that off. You stay here. Interview stops at 1300. Diana Frost and DC Presley are leaving the room. Mm. We didn't actually record the shot, did we? Of course we didn't. He doesn't know that, though, does he? If you don't get those sort of animals into this country without proper organisation... But why kill one of your own? Mm. I think his partners found out that him and the Chinaman were doing a bit of moonlighting. So they came down to get their pound of flesh. Well, he give them up. He's obviously scared. Yeah. Interview resumes 1304. We think your partners found out you and Lan Locke were doing a bit on the side. Who are they? I can't. They'll kill me. Well, that's a chance I'm prepared to take. All right, Mr. Flanagan. This is the way out. Wait a minute. What about if I put my hand up for trading in certain endangered species? All you'll get is a fine. Do we look stupid? OK, what if I cop for handling stolen goods? What if you stop pissing us about and I bang you up in a prison cell for 24 hours until you tell me you shot the Chinaman? Excuse me. 
You recognize this man? Sorry, uh, do you recognize him? Yes. He's the art teacher from East Bank Academy. He doesn't look very well. No, he's not. Do you know his name? No, but the office will have it. He orders the materials and we send the invoice to the school. Oh, it's Patrick Bartley, the art teacher. My God, what's the matter with him? He's dead. What? When did you last see him? Oh, my God, it's just before the uh, half term break. This is terrible. What, what happened? So, was Mr. Bartley married or in a relationship? Uh, as far as I know, he, he, he was single. But, I mean, how did he die? Oh, we're not sure yet. You were saying? Well, he's, he's working here part time as, a, as a, an art teacher to supplement his income as a sculptor. Have you got an address for him, sir? Yeah, yes, yeah, come with me. Why is it artists never live in basements? Francis Bacon did. I'm sure a couple more workouts down the gym with Julie Brown will give you more puff cuff. Thank you. Yeah, it's no good, it's padlocked. Right, DC Presley. Watch and learn. Bet they didn't teach you that at Cambridge. Michelangelo, but our man was certainly talented. Wonder who she is. Oh, that must be her lot. Huh. Where did you get these? We got those from Patrick Bartley's studio. There's also a half-finished sculpture of her. Don't happen to know who she is, do you? <laughs> yes. This is Miss Haymarsh, the music teacher. Although I've uh, never seen a quite like this before. Is she here now? Yes, she should be. Uh, in the music room. <laughs> Bravo. Thank you. Miss Haymarsh. Yes? The head said we might have a word. I'm PC Harmison. This is Inspector Frost and DC Presley. Dented CID. <laughs> Our playing's not that bad, is it? No, 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 no. On the contrary. Thank you. Simon, well done. I'll see you tomorrow. <clears throat> what then? Bad news, I'm afraid. Your colleague, Patrick Bartley, is dead. Oh, my God. How? When? How well did you know Mr Bartley? As a colleague, what happened? Surely a bit better than that. We found these in his studio, along with a half-finished sculpture. Oh, I sat for him on several occasions. I don't see anything wrong with that. No, 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 absolutely. We're just trying to get a picture of the man. When did you last see him? How did he die? That's what we're trying to find out. He must have some idea. Did you ever meet any of his family or friends? No, as I said, we were 
simply colleagues. He promised me a bronze cast of the finished work. I was flattered to be asked. Who knows how he's dead? He might be famous. Were you having an affair with him? <laughs> no. You've so got the wrong idea for a start. He's not my type. And secondly, I wouldn't do it on my own doorstep. Quite right. Don't you agree, Presley? Armisen? Oi, Adam. Hey, what's up here? What's going on? I'm not going to believe this, man. When we got back off the half-term break, we found a dead bloke lying in Mum and Dad's bed, stark naked. What? Who was it? No one knows. How did he get in? Well, they didn't break in. Must have had a key. Where's my key, Malcolm? No, 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 wait, man. You know I left it on your bedside table. But it wasn't there. I'm right in it, Mal. How? Mine's the only key that's missing. Why would I give it to anybody? I don't know. It's all gone mad. I lied to the police and my parents. I told them I had my key. Listen, we came back here, we went upstairs, and we stayed in bed till it got dark. It was brilliant. We did everything. But before we left, I put the key in your room, man. I swear. Well, it wasn't there, and I need it back. Come in. Ah. You are in. Is this urgent, sir? Only I've got to see a man about a croc. Flanagan. Yeah, that's right. How do you know? I don't just do paperwork and civic lunches, Jack. Really? Anyway, how can I help you? It's more like, how can I help you? Well, you could get to the point, sir, only uh, I'm rather pushed for time at the moment. I've just had a call from the Wildlife Crime Unit at the Yard. After your finds at Flanagan's place, they tell me they were already investigating Flanagan, and that man called... the Vietnamese. Hmm. Anything else? Hadn't you better go and find out? Well, no, I'm not traipsing all the way up to London. Can't they send someone down here? Apparently, they're even more short-staffed than we are. Well, that I can't believe. Right. Well, um, just send young Presley, then. Oh, I can't. He's busy. He's got a body in a bed and a body in a crock. Jack, get him to go. All right. <laughs> National crime here. Triads, the Big Circle Boys, the Yakuza Vietnamese gangs. Look, the illegal trade in arms is $450 billion a year. The illicit trade in drugs worldwide is some $350 billion. And the global income for trafficking rare and endangered animals runs a close third. I'd say big enough to kill for, wouldn't you? Here. Take this with you. The trade on the internet. You bet. Look on page four. There was a gorilla advertised on the net. I only wanted four and a half grand for it just to get rid of it. We rescued it from a shed in North London. Bastards. Ah, oh, this is Officer Harvey from HM Customs, DC Presley Denton CID. So how does Denton come into this? Well, we've been keeping a close eye on a possible network, smuggling and dealing. We have a list of suspects, and they're all from your area. Names? Flanagan, Lan Locke, the murdered Vietnamese. Colin Edwards, Kenneth Shaw. No. He owns a chain of garden centres. Shortcuts? Correct. Edwards is a haulage contractor who works for Shaw. And Flanagan supplies them with domestic pets. And you saw what else he had. We'd like you to let him go. We believe he'll lead us further up the chain. No, I, uh, I don't think my governor will allow that. Flanagan's not only a prime witness to a murder, he's our prime suspect. Your superintendent Mallet doesn't think so. No, no, no. He's in custody for his own protection. Look, he'll tell us sooner or later who got rid of Lan Law. Yeah, but when? Well, they gave me some other names, Gov. Colin Edwards and a Kenneth Shaw. Shaw? Of shortcuts? He's got more money than Roman Abramovich. You can forget about him. Yeah, but there's a connection. WCU and Customs have been tracking various shipments of theirs en route to this country. So? Well, 
Shawcuts imports tons of furniture from the Far East each year, so this may well be a way into the country for endangered animals. If we released Flanagan... He'd be a dead man. Not if we got him under surveillance. I promised the Yard would help out. And I suppose Customs and the Wildlife Crime Unit are going to pay for the overtime, are they? That's not your concern, Jack. Oh, right, fine. I take it I'll be using the one-man team again, will I? All right, go on. You let him go. Looks like you're in for some overtime. Do you want to keep the room on, or shall I put it up on the notice board? Kevin, we've been looking for you. We found Lan Lock, but you weren't around. I wasn't caught. When I got back here, the place was swarming with police. Oh, why was that? Stick around to find out. Been at my mum's for a couple of days. Don't lie, you were at the police station. All right. They pulled me in. Apparently, they've been watching Lan Lock for some time. They followed him back here and found all the animals and bits of him. What was all that about? What did you tell the police? I told them all I did was rent in the cellar and that I hardly ever saw him. That's all I said. Good. We're still in business, then. You're not serious. Deadly. We want you to take over Lance's contacts and suppliers. <sighs> oh, I don't know. A lot of money in it for you, Kevin. You've lost us all our stock. About £150,000 worth. You got that much to pay us back? No, I don't. No, I don't worry about that. Or the police. We'll get you out of the country till things calm down. No. No. No choice. Unless you want to join Law and Lock. You were on your way somewhere anyway, weren't you? Give me your passport. Get your stuff together and come over to the centre. We'll take it from there. You're going to be one of the team now. Followed. Don't think so. That's why I brought these just in case. What did you do with the Land Rover? It's in the car park. Give me the keys, I'll get it back to the farm. Well, I've been eating. No, you're going to be leaving from here in the next hour. It's all sorted. You're going to go to Antwerp to meet up with the Vietnamese. They know you're coming. Do they know about Lan Lok and his family? Not since they found out he was ripping them off. You'll need some cash. How long will I be away? 
Why? Mr. Edwards, um, I need to tell my mum something. Oh, that's fair enough. Look, send her a postcard. Say you're doing a little bit of business. It's whatever you want. Frost. Yeah, he's completely disappeared, Gov. This place is massive. Yeah, his vehicle's still here. Be in there. There's his Land Rover. Uh, I'll tell you what we do. I'll go in and have a look around, see if there's anything relevant to your case. You go and have a word with Shaw. Really? Don't you want to? No. We don't want to go in team handed and put the wind up him yet, do we? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, what did Shaw have to say? Nothing. Oh. Well, he's abroad, probably buying more of this stuff. Oh. Supposedly coming back tomorrow. Tell you what, you check out the animals. Not that they would be stupid enough to sell anything dodgy here. And I'll uh, see if I can find out about Flanagan. Are you looking for anything special, sir? Um, yes, he, Kevin Flanagan, is he still here? And you are? I'm Detective Inspector Frost, Denton CID. He's not Inspector, he made a delivery a couple of hours ago. Oh, I see. That's funny, his Land Rover is still in the car park. Well, perhaps he's still in the store. Oh, yeah. Do you only deal in, uh, domestic animals? Of course. Oh. What about these, uh, what about this over here, then? Look, this parrot. Right? The orange-winged Amazon. Yeah, well, as I said, um, this, the uh, macaw. Eh? This is a cut above a budgie. This is a little bit better than your average domestic bird, isn't it, eh? Where did you get them from? Breeders, they're all bred in this country. They've all got to be licensed, you see. Yeah. Does Kevin Fladigan breed these exotic birds? No, he's a rabbits and rodents man. Is there anything else I can do for you, Inspector? Yes. Do you sell uh, chimps and monkeys? No, they're not considered to be domestic pets. Oh. What about cobras? Hardly, Inspector, although we do have the odd inquiry for a python. Do you? Well, perhaps you could give me a list of your suppliers. And their licences, of course. I'm not sure I've got them all here in the office. Oh, well, never mind. There's no rush. Tomorrow will do. I'm busting. You want a cup of tea or something? No, I'm fine, Tar. I won't be a minute. Well, I don't know. I'm not an ornithologist, am I? You better get your mates from the wildlife crime unit down here. I wouldn't trust the licenses, though. How much was that macaw selling for? Two thousand, the label said. Two thousand. Huh. Now, if that had been a hyacinth macaw, it would have been worth twenty thousand or fifty thousand if you had a pair. Because there's only three hundred or so left in the world. How do you know that? I read the literature that was on your desk.
What are you doing here, Gov? I mean, what am I doing here? I live here. Well, she's on her way and you'll, you know, embarrass her. Well, I wouldn't want to be an embarrassment. Hey, what are you having? Apart from WPC Harmison, I mean. I thought we had a deal. All right. All right. 11 o'clock. And don't forget, Absolutely. Saturday I have the house to myself. Absolutely, you and Julie. Don't forget about the record cover. Hook twice, go around the block. Go around the block. Now, the reason you're here is because you're all in Mr. Bartley's senior art class. Or were. Has he left, then? All in good time. What we want to know is, did any of you notice anything unusual about Mr. Bartley's behaviour recently? Why? What's he done? Not for Miss Haymarsh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Miss Haymarsh? The music teacher. She's bloody gorgeous, sir. He had loads of women. Some of them were married as well. Oh, yeah. He told you that, did he? Yeah. He said housewives loved posing for him. <laughs> so, what has he done, sir? He's died. Drugs. Now, what made you say that? Well, he's an artist, isn't he? Your joint is no big deal. Mr Bartley died of a heart attack. Where? In bed. Who's? <laughs> <laughs> Your mum's. <laughs> 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 Our art teacher put himself about a bit. Lucky man. Tasty music teacher. Bored housewives. Long school holidays. Why did I join the police? Because you can't draw. Mrs. Harris, where were you on the day you rowed with your husband and left the caravan site? How did you know? It's my fault. I overheard you the night that Patrick Bartley was found dead in your bed. Is that his name? Hmm. You didn't know, then? No. Am I a suspect? Hmm? Oh, it's just routine. It's a matter of interest. Where did you go? My husband thinks I'm having an affair. Are you? No. <laughs> On holiday, he started accusing me again. After two days, I'd, I had enough, so I walked out. I got the bus into Shoreham. I had fish and chips, a couple of glasses of wine, and then I slept through King Kong. And then I went back to the caravan. And was your husband there when you got back? Yes, unfortunately. What had he been doing? He took Adam fishing. What school does Adam go to? Denton Grammar. Why? Patrick Bartley was an art teacher. N not at Adam's school. No, they have Mr Russell. Excuse me. Are we keeping you up? Oh, sorry, sir. <clears throat> Late night. I know. Where's your key? Hello, Malcolm. You lost your key? Oh, I forgot. I gave it to Malcolm. Hello, Malcolm. We met at East Bank. Why did he give you his key? Well, I was going to put some music samples on his keyboard. So you still got the key? Oh, sorry, Miss Harris. I can't find it. All right, OK. Well, when you do find it, perhaps you'll give me a call at the station, will you? All right, thank you. Oh, Adam, by the way, where did you go with your dad that day your mum went off? Oh, I went sea fishing. Oh. With your dad? No, didn't come. It's too rough. Oh, right. Where did he go? Search me. All right, OK. Thanks very much. Leave us, sir. Yeah, I reckon so. Anyway, it's easy enough to check up on. But where did the husband go? And why were those two boys lying?
come back from Adam's house. The police are around there. They want to know where the key is. I put it back in his room. I took it. Why? I had to. Let me explain before you start going mad. If you wanted to shag Mr Bartley, why didn't you do it at your place or at the studio? Calm down, Malcolm. I was trying to protect us, you. What, by doing it with Mr Bartley? He'd found out about us. He threatened to tell the headmaster unless I went with him. You'd have been expelled. I'd have lost my job. But why at Adam's house? When we'd been there. He thought Adam's place was yours. He was jealous of you. So he wanted to get his revenge by doing it in your house. Sick bastard. How did he die of a heart attack? He just did. And was that before? Or after? Stop it. I didn't even take my clothes off. You have to trust me. Here's what you do. Take the key to the police station and tell them you found it at home. It's all going to be fine. I promise. Yeah, I thought that we could uh, take a run out into the country and then tonight I would cook you that meal I promised. Hmm? Good. Right. I'll pick you up in about what, say, 20 minutes? Yeah. Ta-da. Nice flowers, Gov. I like the pulley, too. New. What are you doing here? I thought you were supposed to be on duty. Flanagan's body's just been found at a service station on the motorway. I'm off duty. He's been shot through the head. The inconsiderate sod. Does Mullet know? Not yet. I told him not to release Flanagan, but would he bloody listen? No, he wouldn't. And now my prime witness is dead. Hey? Shall I tell him? I don't care. I'm not going. I guess at least 24 hours. Uh, was he killed here? He was shot in this van. There's no doubt about that. See here. See this. That's the exit one. Well, the bullet must be still in the van somewhere then. No, there's nothing yet, Jack, no. What was Flanagan doing in the back of a fruit and veg van? Hiding? Possibly. How did he get here? Well, according to the driver who found him, he certainly wasn't in here when he left the van on Friday. Right. Thanks very much, Doc. Why would anybody leave a van here? I mean, it's in the middle of nowhere. He met his girlfriend here, then went back to her place. Apparently, he was playing away. I think I found your bullet, sir. Here it is. Well done. All you've got to do now is find the gun and the bloke who pulled the trigger, and I can keep my lunch appointment. All right, where's the footage of the veg lorry? That camera's not working. Sorry. So am I. We could have had a picture of our murderer. All right, go on, what have you got? This one is all the vehicles coming off the motorway and it covers Friday. All right, go on, let's see it. Hi, it's Julie. I'm sorry I'm not in at the moment. Please leave a message. 
Hello, love. It's Jack. I'm sorry I won't be able to make our lunch today. It's work. I hope I haven't spoiled your day. I hope to see you soon. All right, bye. Just a sec, what was that? Stop, stop it, go back, go back. That lorry, there, bring it forward. What's the name on this lorry? Shortcuts. Shortcuts? Well, you better give your mates down at customs a bell. Well, it's Saturday. She might be off duty today. So should I be. How much of your stock comes from the Far East, Mr Shaw? Well, it's roughly about 80%. The rest comes from Africa. And do you take delivery on a monthly, weekly basis? Well, whenever the ships arrive. <laughs> Why all this sudden interest from customs? We haven't done something irregular, have we? How does the merchandise get from the docks to the garden centre? By truck, how else? You haven't answered my question. Are they your trucks, are they? No. Do you know Colin Edwards? Of course, he's our haulage contractor. Does he drive as well? Yes. What is all this? Do you know a Kevin Flanagan? No. He delivers to your store rabbits and rodents. Pets? Well, you'd be better off speaking to Mr Pryor, our pets manager. I have. Thing is, Mr Flanagan is dead. Oh. What's that got to do with me? Well, the CCTV footage shows one of your trucks at the scene around about the same time. Oh. Well, you'd better speak to Mr Edwards, then. We intend to. <laughs> That man is seriously cold. He took the Flanagan news without batting an eyelid. This place is a perfect cover. He's involved. Yeah, but look at the size of it. Why would he bother to do anything that was dodgy? This is nothing compared to what he could be making from animals. They traffic for profit, pure and simple. Elephants, rhinos, gorillas, tigers, they're worth just as much dead as alive. How do you work that out? Well, they don't kill for the bush meat to feed some poor starving tribe. It's for the ivory, the, the rhino horn, the jewelry, the aphrodisiacs. Every single inch of a tiger is used, from its whiskers to its penis. All the creatures that are shot, snared, trapped, poisoned, just so somebody can wear them, or stand umbrellas in their legs. All right, <clears throat> that's enough. I get the picture. Um, Harris's alibi looks sound. He dropped the boy off, got some petrol, copy of the receipt, and went back to the caravan. Farmer reckons he never left again. Good. Hi, um, is Inspector Frost here? Have you got the key, Malcolm? Um, yeah, can you give it to him for me? Why don't you give it to me yourself, Malcolm? What's the rush? Do you know what having an affair means? I'm not stupid. Because I think that your art teacher is having an affair with your music teacher, Carol Haymark. They weren't having an affair. How do you know? Hmm? How do you know that? Because she loves me. How old are you, Malcolm? 16 next week. Did she take you to the Harris's house? Malcolm? No. I took her. You do know that she was breaking the law. I'm not a child. In the eyes of the law, you are until next week. Now, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get your parents down here and you're going to sign a statement of what you've just told us. In the meantime, I think you and I ought to go and see Miss. Head, flank, chest. Head, flank, chest. Inspector! Miss Haymarsh, is there no end to your talents? <laughs> yeah, I see, that's a saver, isn't it? Yeah. Hmm. Thank you. All right, George on guard. <laughs> what do you think, eh? Zorro lives. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Inspector. Oh. 
Here. Malcolm tells us that you and he had sex in the Harris's house. Oh. What I want to know is, was Patrick Bartley there too? No. What are you suggesting? Well, you tell me. You see, apart from the Harrises, there was uh, three sets of DNA in that bed. I took Bartley there the following day. He was blackmailing me. Why? He found out I was having an affair with one of the boys in his class. Malcolm? Yes. Bartley made me pose nude for him in return for keeping quiet. Is that all? He followed us to the house, thinking it was Malcolm's house. The next day, he said, unless I took him back there, he'd tell Malcolm's parents. He was really enjoying the hold he had over the situation. So you went to the house? I refused to get undressed and tried to talk him out of it. He wouldn't have it. He went mad. I was scared. So he raped you? Would have. See, what I don't understand is, unless he tied you up, there is no way that he could have got undressed and kept you in the room. He threatened me. So I went along with it and got undressed. So you consented? No. Only until I elbowed him in the face. He got off me and went into convulsions. Well, why didn't you call an ambulance? I didn't give a damn about that sick bastard. So I got dressed and ran. Yeah, but not before you'd taken his ID. Why was that? I don't know. I panicked. I was furious. I didn't know he was dead. Honestly. I'm not a criminal. Oh, well. Malcolm is only 15. I'm only 24. It's against the law. Malcolm's parents entrusted their son into the care of this school. You abused that trust. Didn't feel like that. Ask Malcolm. We love each other. Is that such a terrible thing? to me. Whatever the law decides. Come on, go and get your coat. Frost. I'm at the CITES and Customs Office with Miss Desai. She'd like a word, sir. Kieran. You tell him it's your intelligence. Hello, Inspector. I thought you should know the tribute has docked in Antwerp. So? It's a freighter with a consignment on board for shortcuts. They're offloading the shortcuts container in Antwerp. Our information is that they've been taking on various livestock with their furniture shipments ever since Singapore. They've put in at Sumatra, Sri Lanka, Mombasa en route. I mean, who knows what else is in that container? Yeah, well, the crew must be bent because there's no way that those animals could survive that journey in a container. Yeah, well, they're bound to be. Money's no object. Well, my priority is to get Edwards. What are you doing? One of my men has just left for Antwerp. We think Edwards will make the pickup himself. Right, Presley, you get down to a shortcut and pick up Pry. Miss Desai, perhaps you'd like to join us when we interview him. This is your name in Vietnamese, Pryor. Pardon? This is Lan Lok's diary. Who's Lan Lok? The man Flanagan swore you shot. Flanagan's a liar, then. Well, we've got it on tape. Live from the farm. I didn't shoot anyone. 
Flanagan's dead. Of course, you knew that, didn't you? Listen, I, I didn't know anything about this. I wasn't... No comment. You... The last time Flanagan was seen alive was at uh, Shortcuts Garden Centre. Uh, his Land Rover is still there in the car park. I've got CCTV footage of a Shortcuts truck arriving at the same place where Flanagan's body was found. Don't you think that's a coincidence? The bullet matches the one found in Mr. Larn Lock. Another coincidence? My client had nothing to do with the killing. Flanagan said you were there. But Flanagan's dead, you said. Yes, he is. But we have got his signed statement. My client will admit to dealing in the animals, but not to murder. I'm listening. Larnlock's people in Asia captured the animals. Edwards organises the shipment. My job was to find out who was interested in buying what. And how do you do that? When people know you're dealing this stuff, they find you and tell you. Who are these people? Cosmetics. Medical research still needed animals. That was Edwards' province and the other stuff. What other stuff? Ivory, bushmeat, stuffed... Tiger cubs, chartreuse shawls, whatever's available. We never found any of this stuff at Flanagan's. He wouldn't. Edwards kept that side to himself. Oh, so when you found out that Larn Lock and Flanagan were doing a bit of freelance business on the side, that's when you decided to kill them. That was Edwards. I'm just a salesman. On a deal. What's on offer? Far East connections. For starters. Do we have a deal? So what about the rest of the shipment? The ivory, the bush... I don't know. He has another partner. Mr Shaw? I didn't say that. Letting Flanagan go was a calculated risk. I take full responsibility. Are you going to tell his mother? Yes. Sorry to interrupt. It's on its way. Oh, good. What is it? The shortcuts container. Ah, uh, you two haven't met, have you, mm. sir? This is Officer Desai of Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs. CITES Group. That's a convention of international trades on endangered species, sir. This is Superintendent Mullet. Hello. Please, come in. All right, so, what's the latest? Uh, our counterparts in Antwerp took the bribe the Vietnamese offered, as arranged. The truck has cleared customs and has left the docks, and we have an officer with it under surveillance as we speak. Why clear customs in Antwerp? Oh, it's a bit of a black hole. If they clear customs over there, they can drive through any port here without having to go through immigration passport control or X-ray scans. Hmm. The beauty of the EU, sir. Oh, by the way, is this ivory? It was a gift, Jack. Not from the elephant. OK, ETA ten minutes. All right. You all know what to do. Uh, keep out of sight. <laughs>
I'm arresting you for the murder of Lan Locke and Kevin Flanagan. I don't know what you're talking about. Your partner, Mr. Pryor, tells us different. And I'm going to do you for the animals. What animals? The ones you've got on board. We saw them being transferred from the container in Belgium. All right, all right. I was just doing Pryor a favour, bringing them in, that's all. It's no big deal. Do you want me to pay the fine now? Yes, I do. But that's after I find your gun and do you for murder. And what gun is that? We found the bullet that killed Flanagan. It comes out of the same gun that killed Lan Locke. I don't own a gun. Jack! Well, yeah. It's empty. It's just furniture. Oh, what? Good joke. Nope. This is the panel. This is the panel that'll come away. All right, get it off. Come on, Elvis. Give her a hand. of the lorry here in Denton. I mean, who's got the right? We can still manufacture drugs for people to stick in their arms, but we can't manufacture any more of these, can we? Hey? Gov. What? <coughs> well done, Harmison. I don't suppose you'd like to put your hand in there and get the gun for me, would you? the gun. What I want to know is, why didn't you throw it in the channel? My insurance. Hold on, just a minute, lads. What do you mean? Like the cling film. But your fingerprints will be underneath the cling film. Not mine, they won't. What's that supposed to mean? I'd like to do a deal. Do a deal? What do you think I am, a croupier or something? Everybody wants a deal. All right, go on. What if I tell you who ordered it? Go on. You'll find Pryor's fingerprints under that cling film. He killed Larnlock. It's his gun. But then you covered them up with cling film and shot Flanagan. It wasn't my idea to kill Larnlock or Flanagan. Well, whose was it? <laughs> Are you receiving me? Over. Roger, Gun. We're all set. Okay. Well, uh, when the gate opens, I want you to follow me through. Mm -hmm. I'm going to drive straight up to the house. You remain just the other side of the gate until I call you. Right. Understood. Over. <laughs> Detective Inspector Frost, Denton CID. See Mr. Shaw. Thank you.
Do you like guns, Inspector? No. Have you got a license for this lot? Oh, yes, of course. <coughs> <And you. coughs> I hear you're playing havoc at one of my centres. You know, someone's going to have to compensate me for that. No doubt your solicitor is on the case, even as we speak. Oh, you better believe it. I mean... <laughs> You've arrested my transport contractor, one of my managers. What are they charged with? Murder. And customs want them for importing animals illegally. Oh, dear, how awful. Now, Inspector. Do you know what this is? It's a hyacinth macaw. Well, you know your birds. Yeah, just a bit. <laughs> Do you like animals, Inspector? Yeah, some. Come with me. I want to show you something very few people have seen. Come on. Nervous? No, no, I'm all right. Your boy, your boy. Tell him, Brian, she's perfectly safe. She's all right. She's a pussycat. <laughs> you haven't got her brother lying on the floor of your outhouse, have you? Now, this is how they get outside. Through here. When that's open, they can come and go just as they please. As long as they're not contained in there. Hey, Kismet. <laughs> Where did you get that from? By our various other collectors. The other two are Himalayans. All licensed. Yeah, like your guns. Amazing. I don't know, you've got a house full of hunting rifles and a garden full of wild animals. Fish and barrel are the words that spring to mind. I'm a collector. What's bothering you, Inspector? Why do you do it? Do what? Keep animals in captivity. Give you a buzz, does it? I do it because I can. That's what gives me a buzz. How much is a dead tiger worth? <laughs> Are you fishing, Inspector? <laughs> what is it you want, Frost? I mean, you can't really believe that I've got anything to do with this smuggling, shootings. I mean, look at it, man. Why would I? Who said anything about shooting? You did. In my office, when you told me that one of my suppliers had been found dead in a car park. Did I? What are you locking up for? There's nobody here, is it? Oh, uh, well, it's just a habit. Well, actually, it's a rule. Prior is giving you up. Customs have been following your boats halfway around the world. 
Well, look. What if I pay the fine? I promise never to do it again. Hmm. No. Pryor is going to testify that you ordered the killings. That makes it conspiracy to murder. She hadn't said that. Still, this will have my day in court. You won't be there. him with you, will you? Ah, Trig. We got a pound on you. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, listen, uh, you remember Teddy Rappaport? Teddy Rappaport? Yes, I do. He was a councillor. I put him down for embezzlement. What about him? Well, he had a wife and daughter. So, his daughter's name was Julie. Was it? She married a Frank Brown. It was in all the papers. Suicide, counsel. Yes, all right, come on, get on with it. Do you think she knows you put her dad away? No, I don't think she does. <clears throat> there you are, how's that? Both in the same place at the same time. Yes, I know. I'm sorry. Sorry, that's all my fault. Anyway, listen, I've got something uh, I want to tell you. Before you do, um, I've got something to tell you. No, no, no. Let me get mine out of the way. Me first. All right, go on, then. You first. I've not been entirely honest with you, Jack. I didn't tell you I was married. Oh, well. Well, I hadn't seen Frank since our separation a couple of years ago, and... Well, the, the thing is, when you and I were supposed to go out last weekend, and we didn't, I went out with some friends, and I... I bumped into Frank. And the... The point is... I think there's still some hope for us. Me and Frank, and... I don't want to lead you on. I'm sorry. Now, your turn. That's all right. Doesn't really matter now. I just want to wish you all the best. I don't believe. 